Hey guys, it's Crazy Boy here. And uh, what, back when The Last Jedi came out, I made a video talking about it and giving my thoughts. And in that video, I said that I would probably never review the other Star Wars films because so many people have talked about them. And now I thought that since I've been doing ranking videos, I thought it would be a good idea to do a ranking of all the theatrically, re theatrically released Star Wars movies um, so you can get my brief thoughts on all the films as well as my least favorite to favorite. So without further ado, here are all 12 Star Wars movies ranked. Number 12, my least favorite Star Wars movie is Star Wars The Clone Wars, the theatrical release. Um, yes, the animated film that was released back in 2008 um, now this really is only uh, the worst by default because this actually wasn't made to be a movie. It was made for the show originally, but George Lucas wanted it to be a movie last minute. And you can really tell that this wasn't supposed to be a movie. It feels like one long episode of the Clone Wars show. The plot of the film is that Anakin and his new Padawan Ahsoka are trying to get a, a little baby hut back to his family. Uh, yeah, that's really all that's going on. Now, the only reason I watched this movie was because I wanted to watch the show, and that, of course, meant that I had to watch the movie. Before I watched the movie, I was hearing nothing but bad things about it. Say, it actually wasn't as bad as I was expecting. Don't get me wrong, it's still not a good movie. Uh, it still is kind of... The plot is kind of stupid, and, it, like, it's just, um... Like I said, it's one long episode of The Clone Wars, but a lot of I think a lot of people exaggerated how bad this movie was, at least in my opinion, because I didn't think it was as bad as they were saying. If you do want more Star Wars outside of the films, then I would highly recommend The Clone Wars show, uh, like the actual TV show. Um, it's on Disney Plus right now. Number 11 is Star Wars Episode Two: Attack of the Clones. Um, now, I'm not going to go too in-depth with the prequels because I'm sure you all know all about them, but I'll just say that episode two is easily my least favorite of the trilogy. Um, I didn't, I, I, I don't like the, the romance between Padme and Anakin, uh, as a lot of people have said. Um, I like the Battle of Geonosis, but that's pretty much it. I also am not one of those people, I'm one of those people that doesn't like Yoda fighting, um, and I know a lot of people are pretty uh, divided on that. But that's personally what I think. I, I don't like seeing Yoda fight. Because um, he said in The Empire Strikes Back that you don't need weapons. So, I don't know. It just kind of doesn't make sense for his character. Number 10 is Solo, A Star Wars Story. Um, now, I wasn't very excited for Han Solo movie, even though he's one of my favorite characters. I just felt it was uh, not needed. Like, I, I didn't feel like we needed a Han Solo movie because... We already know pretty much everything that happened in Han's past, so it feels very unnecessary to me. I didn't even go see this in theaters, and it's a good thing I did, because when I finally did watch this movie, I really didn't like it. It just really wasn't very interesting to me. The actors were doing a good job, it's just I, I personally wasn't interested very much, considering we already know what happened in his past, you know? Um, we don't, it, it feels like it's trying to do everything that we've already seen, and it also, it, this was extremely boring, honestly, to me. Uh, for me, this is probably the most boring Star Wars movie. Number nine is Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. Now, if this was me when I first saw the movie, it would be a bit higher on the list, but after my recent rewatch of this film in pre preparation for this video, I really don't like it. I will be getting into spoilers, so beware. Having Palpatine come back feels very lazy, and I highly doubt that this was the plan from the beginning, as they say. Um, and also having Rey be Palpatine's granddaughter, I also felt like that was pretty lazy. It, it felt like it, they had to come up with an explanation as to why Rey's so powerful. I actually like what The Last Jedi did in making Rey a nobody. Uh, but of, of course, no, she has to be related to someone we already know. The fake-out deaths involving C-3PO and Chewie are so dumb. I mean, it makes the movie have no feel like it has no stakes. Um, people will like supposedly die in this movie and then come back like two scenes later. It's so dumb. 
There's also way too much fan service in this movie. It feel this movie feels like its only job is to wrap up the Skywalker saga, so it kind of just like shoves all these references to other films. Not having Palpatine come back also ruins something else. Uh, with the original six films, the whole point is that Anakin brings balance to the Force. He is the chosen one that eventually, you know, stops Palpatine. But if you have him come back in this movie, it completely just throws away the, the first six movies' whole point. So the last battle in general, the, f the final battle between Rey and Palpatine, it's so dumb. It feels like... <laughs> like a typical ending to like a superhero movie that comes out nowadays. It, you got Palpatine like shooting lightning and he's like, I am all the Sith. And Rey is like, I'm all the Jedi. And then she holds up two lightsabers and like uh, deflects the lightning. <laughs> it, I don't, it, I hate the final battle. Honestly, watching the final battle, it almost seems like it's not a Star Wars movie. And of course, I know everybody's talked about the ending where she adopts the Skywalker name. I mean, me, I, I just think that she should have said Rey Palpatine because I feel like it would have been good for her to just embrace that name and not let it hold her back. But I, I felt like that could have been a good message, but, you know... Of course, she has to say Rey Skywalker because she doesn't want to be known as a Palpatine. It, it's so stupid. Like, the actors, of course, do a good job. Uh, Daisy Ridley, everyone, Adam Driver, they all do a really good job as usual, as they've always done throughout all three films. But the writing is the problem of, of Episode Nine. It's It's really terrible. Number eight is Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Um, now, I initially liked this when it first came out, but not so much now. I, I just really find this movie uninteresting. It takes place right before A New Hope, and it's about a group of rebels trying to get the plans of the Death Star. And I really just, I, again, I ask, why do we need this? <laughs> it, it feels kind of unnecessary, and um, none of the characters are interesting to me. Even the main character is not really someone you're, you're very interested in, at least I wasn't. It does have some really good moments, and the best moment in the film doesn't involve any of the main characters. It's just a badass scene of Vader slaughtering rebels. Number seven is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace. Uh, now, I'm gonna be brief with this, uh, give my quick thoughts, because The Phantom Menace is probably the most discussed film ever. Uh, so I'll just say that I don't think it's that bad. Um, yeah, sure, it's boring a lot of the time, it's, you know, Jar Jar is annoying, the acting sucks at times, but honestly, I, I don't think it's terrible. It's it's one of the better Star, well, not one of the better Star Wars films, but it's not one of the worst Star Wars films for me. Uh, Darth Maul is cool. Um, I always look forward to the fight of between Darth Maul, Obi-Wan, and Qui-Gon. Uh, that's always fun to watch. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say about this one. Number six is Star Wars The Last Jedi. Um, now, I already reviewed this. Um, I'm going to make it brief. Uh, this was originally going to be number five, uh, but upon rewatching recently, um, I don't like it as much. The stuff I like about this mo the movie are Rey, Luke, and Kylo Ren. All of their scenes, everything involving them is just great. Um, I know a lot of people don't like Luke's character. That's fine. Personally, I, I was fine with it. Um, I don't like the stuff with Finn, Rose, or Poe. Um, it, it was boring to me. I mean, every time they went to what Finn and Rose were doing, I was always just wanting them to go back to Rey and what she's doing. Because um, I found that story more interesting. Uh, it's a it's a good... It, I think it's a good Star Wars movie. It's does something new with the franchise. A lot of people didn't like it, but I'm one of those people that did. Uh, so it's a good, I, I like it. It's a good Star Wars movie, but it's not one that I would want to immediately rewatch. Number five is Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith. Now, this was a film that I didn't feel the need to rewatch because I've seen it so many times, but I rewatched it anyway <laughs> uh, because there's just something about it that always wants, that makes me want to watch it a lot of the times because I don't know, maybe it's because it's it's probably the most dark 
film out of the whole franchise, or maybe it's because of how entertaining it is. Either way, I always see my, I always find myself wanting to rewatch this movie. Sure, it has problems like the fight between Obi Wan and Anakin lasting a bit too long, and uh, the Yoda versus Palpatine fight, which I think was extremely unnecessary. <laughs> In my opinion, I just I, I I never liked the Yoda versus Palpatine fight because we know both characters are gonna survive, so I really just felt they should have focused on just Anakin and Obi Wan. And of course, acting is not always great. Revenge of the Sith still manages to be an enjoyable film for me. I really enjoy this watching this film, even though I don't think it's the, the best Star Wars movie. It's one of the most entertaining Star Wars movies. My only real big problem with this movie is that Anakin's turn to the dark side uh, happens just a little bit too quick and easily. Um, I mean, he kills Count Dooku with like no, almost no hesitation. He hesitates at first, then Palpatine just says, do it, and he just kills Dooku right then and there. Like, you, you've, he's had like years of Jedi training and he just killed a Sith, um, just by some old man on the side saying, do it. That's kind of really silly to me. If you watch the Clone Wars show along with this movie, it makes a lot more sense, his turn to the dark side. I think my favorite scene in the movie is Order 66 because of how dramatic it is. And the music in the scene is amazing. The soundtrack in general is, is great. Um, but I love Order 66 because it's impressive how they make you care for characters that you barely even know. So that's pretty impressive. So Revenge of the Sith has definitely uh, gotten better for me. Number four is Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Um, now, like many others, this is my least favorite in the trilogy, uh, mainly just because of the first half being sort of a drag to get through. Uh, but the second half is really, really good. Um, the battle between Luke and Vader is done really well. I mean, and Emperor Palpatine is, of course, great. Um, he's very intimidating, and uh, I don't think the music in the fight scene gets enough credit, honestly. Uh, that's some one of my favorite music pieces in the entire Star Wars saga. Uh, and I love the battle between Luke and Vader, the emotion and the drama in that scene between father and son is just really good. Um, and it's honestly my favorite lightsaber duel in the entire saga. So it may have a slow finish with Jabba and all that stuff, but it's, the second half of the film definitely makes it worth it. Number three is Star Wars The Force Awakens. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this because a lot of people don't like the sequel trilogy, but I'm sorry. I've loved The Force Awakens ever since it came out. The characters the film sets up are great. They're really intriguing. Of course, Han Solo, you know, Harrison Ford is great as the character once again. Kylo Ren is a very interesting villain. He's probably my favorite character in the sequel trilogy just because uh, his arc is consistent through all, all three films, unlike uh, the other characters. I do admit that if you look at the sequel trilogy as a whole, it really doesn't work because of the differences that Ryan Johnson and J.J. Abrams wanted for The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker, and it really messes up everything. So yeah, as a whole, the sequel trilogy is not very good, but I think if you look at the movies individually, it's different because I think each of them are of different quality. So I don't think you should drag down The Force Awakens based on The Rise of Skywalker. Um, they're different quality individually. Number two is Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back. Um, now, of course, these two were going to be at the top of the list. You, you, you know, you guys know that these two movies are the greatest Star Wars movies. Um, not only is this my second favorite Star Wars movie, it's one of my favorite movies, and it's probably one of the greatest sequels ever made. Um, it's much more dark, and it uh, expands upon the first film, builds a, a bigger universe, and introduces us to new characters like Lando Calrissian, uh, Boba Fett, and of course, one of the greatest movie characters of all time, Yoda. Of course, I love The Empire Strikes Back. It's really good, and of course, it has one of the most iconic and greatest twists in movie history. Uh, so yeah, this film is 
fantastic. And number one, my favorite Star Wars movie is Star Wars, or the first one, or, or if you prefer, episode four, A New Hope. Uh, yeah, A New Hope is my favorite Star Wars movie, one of my favorite films of all time, and uh, the reason why Star Wars is so great to me is because it has this huge universe that with multiple characters, multiple alien creatures, and it's the lore of it is so huge and it can sometimes be a bit overwhelming how big the universe really is. New Hope has great characters, great effects that still hold up, and overall it just is a great it's a it's a very well made film and it has one of the most some of the most iconic music of all time and yeah a new hope will always be remembered as one of the greatest movies ever made so those were my thoughts with the ranking of the star wars movies um yeah <laughs> so there you go you you have all my thoughts on all the films and my order of them from worst to best but also be on the lookout for a future video because i'm going to be ranking the star wars shows uh, so, The Clone Wars, Mandalorian, Resistance, Rebels, you know, those shows. I'm gonna be ranking those in the future. I still have to watch all of them because I'm only currently watching The Clone Wars and I'm in Season 4 right now. Uh, so I'm, that's gonna take a while, but expect that video sometime in the future. So that's it guys, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Have a good night.